welcome to uh, today's uh, spotlight uh, where we're going to zoom in on a very exciting uh, organization 360 uh, solar and uh, we have the pleasure to have with us the ceo brian roth uh, brian welcome thank you very much glad to be here so brian uh, i'm uh, going to cover a couple of uh, core topics around the organization and everything you have done uh, so so far but i also would like to uh, invite the audience to uh, ask any questions that they may have use the uh, q a function on uh, on zoom and i will make sure that your questions are put forward to uh, to brian but brian let's kick things uh, off and thinking about you know our audience where some people, of course, know your organization very well. Some people maybe know it less. Could you give us the high-level view of what is uh, the business of 360 Solar? Absolutely. So uh, at 360 Solar, we've developed a vertical solar structure that allows us to do large-scale solar installations without using up a whole pile of land, which is typically one of the biggest challenges with uh, doing solar installations. So. Our story starts about five years ago. Our founder was working in the electrical contracting business and had several jobs where he was doing solar farm installations for uh, for some people in and around uh, Kelowna, British Columbia, and uh, found that you know over and over again they were running into challenges with the amount of land, uh, how much the land cost up there, and how unavailable it was. And so he set out uh, with some engineers and, and some project developers to figure out how it could be done a different way uh, by going up instead of out. And uh, so over the years, he got that done. Um, we got our first demonstration tower installed about a year ago and have been monitoring that for the last 12 months and making sure that it, you know, it weathers all of the storms, it weathers uh, any of the wind, any of it. it you know, making sure it's resilient and uh, it's done extremely well. We're looking at the power it's producing and seeing um, things like soiling and making sure that we're overcoming all of the challenges uh, in the space. And we're now working through all of our commercialization efforts and bringing this uh, out into the market. We started that last year and uh, we're, we've got a lot of very serious prospects that are uh, pretty exciting right now. Yeah, I'd love to. Uh, I'd love to come back to to that now. When when I look at your organization, you know, clearly an organization focused on 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 solar energy. Um, uh, it's you know a space where where many companies are are active. Uh, how how would you say uh, do you differentiate yourself? So of course, there's the element you already mentioned about you know, how you minimize utilization of space and cost that comes with it. But I think there's probably other elements about your organization. I saw that you're working on a patent, uh, you know, you got a, a pretty amazing team. Tell us a little bit more about what, what makes you unique in Absolutely. the industry. So, I mean, the core differentiator from the start is definitely that land savings. It solves what we think is the biggest challenge in the solar space. And that's you know, the availability and the cost of land is, is just high, especially in the places where you actually want the power. You don't necessarily want to go stick a big solar farm in the middle of the desert and then have to transport all of that power into cities and urban environments and places where they need to use the power and land is at a premium. Um, but, you know, we've also, in the development and engineering work, we found several aspects of the tower itself that are patentable and provide some protection uh, for us in the marketplace going forward. And we've recently got some uh, positive news on the, the patent reviews. So we're pretty optimistic that those patents are going to come through in all of the markets where we've applied uh, for them, which, you know, in US, Canada, Europe, parts of Africa, we're, we're, you know, all over with our patent applications, just knowing that we're going to be working in those places over the next several years. Um, and then another differentiator is that the structure itself provides opportunities for us to add additional features and aspects that are regularly missing in these places. We can put telecommunications equipment at the top of it, which can give a project owner an additional revenue stream. 
It can also help to do things like bring municipalities on board because um, you know there's always permitting issues when you're trying to work through towers and, and stuff like that. But if you then tell the municipality, hey, we're also gonna put telecom on top and your, uh, your wireless service, your telecom is all gonna improve for all of your residents and everybody nearby, that often gets people on board. We can put, we can add EV chargers at the bottom, which is another potential revenue stream. We can put storage, battery storage right inside the tower. So there's a lot of add-ons that can be done to make it more than just a solar project. And for project owners, that can make the economics work a lot better than even a traditional field. So multi-purpose uh, solution, uh, of course, with, with the core focus on on solar energy in a in a very efficient uh, in a very efficient way. Now, that that is the company. That is what you do. What makes you unique? Now, if we we put you a bit in the in the wider context, which I can probably you know define as as clean tech uh, sector, clean tech industry. Uh, you know, lots going on in that space. But love to get your take on it and how you see that uh, developing in the in the years to come. Yeah, the market's really exciting right now. Um, you know, obviously there's there's a ton of government money coming at it. There's support from from all levels. Um, you know, it, there's not a lot of markets we can say that are you know hundred million dollar markets that grow twenty percent every year and are projected to do so you know five, seven, ten years out. Um, you look at the the U.S. infrastructure package that they put in place last year devoted I think, 369 or $370 billion to renewables. Um, and it's been, it's been interesting to see them do that on paper last year, but far more exciting this year to see some of those dollars actually going out and shovels going into the ground. Um, like that money is actually real. It's not just something that they talked about. Uh, and so we're seeing that move projects forward. We're seeing the Canadian government in their, their fall budget uh, proposed to do a tax credit that effectively is the same as the, the ITC credit in the U.S., where businesses uh, can get 30% of their upfront project costs back in tax credits. Um, and so we're seeing a lot of progress there that make it possible both, from, uh, both for governments to do projects, but also for private entities to do projects. Uh, and just, you know, more and more things keep moving forward. I think just this last weekend, I read um, the state of Minnesota uh, passed, passed a law that said that their power has to come from 100% renewables by 2040. Uh, you know, to get to those levels, their people are going to have to do projects using products like ours. It just, uh, it, it sets the slate for us to have an enormous amount of success over the next 5, 10, 15 years. Yep. So if, if I listen to you, the, the, the key points to take out of this is one, uh, clearly, at the governmental uh, level, there are clear objectives being set about we want uh, people to use renewables. So that is going to drive your business as, as a provider of a solution. Two, they are making tax credits available. So who is uh, investing in these products will benefit uh, from it from, uh, from a tax perspective, subsidies uh, available. And then uh, three, you combine that with, with, with an approach which is unique. And, and again, that adds uh, an additional cost uh, efficiency with the way that you leverage towers versus expanding over, over land. And really a, a context, in other words, that is driving this, this, this industry, but also puts you in a very interesting spot. So taking all of that into account, take into account the very supporting environment going forward for, for, for what your business is, um, clear uh, opportunities there to, uh, to establish yourself in a very strong way. How, 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 what is your strategy going forward? So we know what you're doing today, but what, how are you looking at developing yourselves in the, in the years to come? So we're doing, uh, I mean, we're working on a number of fronts, but right now we're very focused on uh, bringing projects in the door and executing on them, making sure that those move forward, that these get out in the field, they prove their worth on a large scale. Um, you know, following on to that, we're developing partnerships uh, all over the world right now, but 
um, with, with some focus, especially in Canada and the US, to try and make sure we're working with the right people and we're finding opportunities to develop at scale. We're uh, looking at some ones and twos, but the big picture is we're trying to find people who want to develop renewable energy on a large scale um, in ways that are effective for the communities that they're going to serve. Uh, and, and that's been a real focus of ours. We're talking a lot to uh, First Nations communities. We're talking a lot to some Northern communities, uh, Inuit, and trying to make sure that we don't just uh, take advantage of the fact that they have a lot of funding resources available. We're actually finding solutions that improve their lives. And there's a big focus on making sure that we, we act as a partner as opposed to a vendor. So uh, something that, that we could probably define as, uh, as innovation with, uh, with a true purpose uh, and that uh, uh, goes beyond uh, providing renewable solutions, but also focuses on, uh, on providing a better life and, and, and having an impact on, on society. Now you talk about partnerships. I, I saw the uh, the announcement uh, uh, that uh, came out this morning, I think, uh, about uh, a partnership with uh, Archer Cleantech. Could you tell us a little bit more about, uh, about that? That seems like a pretty interesting development. Absolutely. So Archer Cleantech is a, a company based out of uh, Calgary uh, who focus on developing clean energy projects. Um, I mean, they've worked on, on projects around the world, but uh, right now their emphasis is very much in Alberta and Northern Canada um, and a couple of parts of the US. Um, and so we selected them as a distribution partner uh, for a host of reasons with their expertise and their connections uh, and their ability to deliver on projects with some of the uh, technical expertise and support that they've got. Uh, they just recently announced, I think it was January 31st, they signed uh, an MOU with managed film studios who operate or own and operate uh, currently three film studios uh, in uh, North America and Finland that serve some of the biggest names, you know, the Netflix, the Disney, the, the you know, and, and several others signing on shortly. Um, and they've got plans to build out another three studios in North America over the next 18 months and want to power them all off renewable energy. Um, given the amount of, uh, the limited amount of land that they have on these studio spaces, the towers provide a, a perfect solution to get the renewable energy that they need, but also, you know, going back to my discussion earlier of doing uh, additional functionality with the towers, you know, you think about this on a film studio a lot, you can mount lighting right on it. You can put camera mounts right on it. You can do, uh, you can put um, some of the data storage right inside the tower and save space by, by making it multi-purpose and multi-function. It's just a perfect solution for them. Uh, and they're looking for, you know, megawatt scale power uh, on each of those sites over the next uh, 18 months of, of development. So that is, uh, that is an interesting uh, development. When, when do you think that is going to come to, uh, to fruition? Because I, I think I, I read it was an LOI at this stage. Is that correct? It's, yeah, so it's, uh, there's an MOU, uh, between Managed Film Studio and Archer that gives Archer the first right of refusal on uh, putting the, uh, the whole renewable energy package together for all of those projects. Um, but their timeline for building out the next three studios is to have it all completed in the next 18 months. We're already looking at the, uh, the engineering and load packages on site to put those proposals together and uh and get those into the works yeah 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 so this this is a very interesting example of of the type of of application uh, of your your technology of your solution um film studio high consumer low space uh, or low low availability of space but what what is kind of a target market you would say that you typically focus on is that is that well defined or is it is it very open-ended? 
No, I think that that you've you've hit it right on. It's the ones where uh, power is needed nearby. It's uh, there are space constraints either because land costs too much or because it's an urban environment or land isn't available. Um, or it's where land can be re, you know can be purposed for more uh, more things. If you put this with wineries, if you put it with farming, if you put it in places where um, landowners don't want to give up their land, but also have power requirements to serve the purposes of whatever else they're doing, it's it's just an ideal fit. Yeah, no, it 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 is, and and. Coming back to the point you made earlier about your uh, uh, interactions and working together with First Nations and, and, and Metis uh, communities, uh, you know, that looks like another big milestone. Could you tell us a bit more about uh, that? Like, what is uh, what is the entire idea there? What are you doing with them? What are the plans? Yeah, I mean, one of the biggest things for them is, is reliability. They've been generally underserved. Um, you know, a lot of remote communities have... Uh, are not connected to the traditional grid that the rest of us are. They're operating right now with diesel generators and uh, it's it's expensive, it's unreliable, it's hard to get some of that power in and out, uh, especially in the northern communities for large portions of the year. Um, and they're looking for some of the additional benefits too with you know wireless communications and and getting them connected is is a big deal as well. So uh, giving them power that's reliable, that's going to be on, um, adding all of the backup storage for them. Um, you know even if we can't completely take them off the diesel generators, you know reducing it to a tiny fraction of the use that they have today is a big savings for the health of their communities. Um, and, and we just think that there's a lot we can do to, to help them uh, have sort of ownership and independence of a really reliable solution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, uh, it's obviously, as I said earlier, an interesting uh, uh, development in, in, in many ways in what it means and the purpose that it, uh, that it fulfills. Coming back a bit to, to the strategy. So you talked about, when we talked about the strategy, you said, you know, for the moment, it's it's all about uh, uh, developing. You know, the commercials, developing the the business, growing the business, proving success, uh, which you know is, is 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 logical. But I would like to move a little bit further into the future. So you know, crystal balls are always uh, unreliable, of course. But let's look two three years ahead of us and. Where do you see you at? Where do you see yourself at that at that moment? And and what what are other initiatives that you would be considering with it within that kind of time frame? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, I like to say that over the next five years that we want to install 500 megawatts of power, and that's uh, you know that's a pretty big ambitious number when we talk about uh, some you know most projects are not nearly that big. Um, but a little bit at a time, it's all about bringing the projects in, executing on them and making it happen. Um, and over that time horizon, I'd like to think that we will probably get a little bit more involved on the project ownership side as well in taking a look at, you know, how we partner with the investors who are coming in and developing these projects. Um, you know, if we can come in and have a little more control over that process, it certainly makes it easier for us to move forwards and make sure that the right solution is being offered to in the right places. Uh, and so I, uh, I certainly hope we can get involved at that level. But, you know, first and foremost, right now, it's, it's absolutely all about project execution. Uh, over mm -hmm. the next 12 to 18 months. Uh, no, and that is where the focus uh, should be. To put your, your, your comment about 500 megawatt in, in context, uh, you know, what, what is typically or what would on average uh, one tower would be? Yeah, in perspective, that, that 500 megawatts is enough. Where did I have it? To, per, to do just over a thousand homes that are, you know, your average, you know, 2,000 square foot home, family of four, uh, utilizing their power uh, for year round. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. And how many projects would that be? Like, uh, can I visualize it that way? Yeah, you certainly can. I mean, the the managed film studio projects, as an example, are you know they're looking at five to six megawatts per uh, per studio. So if you think about projects like that, uh, it's you know a hundred projects. There are some that we're talking to that are quite a bit bigger. Uh, you know, 50, 75, 100 megawatts in a single project. Uh, but there's also some that are smaller, where they're talking about, um, you know, one megawatt, just a few towers. Yeah, yeah. You know, it gives a bit of, of, of perspective on what this means, because then your, your figure of 500 megawatts seems, you know, very realistic. That is not like a, uh, you know, a crazy figure, and that's what you want to achieve. That is like uh, achievable, realistic, and... Uh, it's something uh, that, uh, you know, people can look at uh, with, with comfort. Yeah, it's definitely not an unattainable milestone, but it's not going to be easy either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, uh, I, get, uh, I get that. But uh, as I always say, you know, nothing is, uh, nothing is easy in this, exactly. uh, in this, uh, in this world. You've so, got to have a bit of a reach. Absolutely. So let's now move away from 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 the business and look at it more from a financials perspective and look a bit at the uh, at the market so i was looking at uh, at at your stock uh, over the last uh, you know couple of of months and what what you see over there is uh, like the entire market has been you know hit particularly Technology growth companies last year. We all we all know that for all the reasons we uh, we can talk hours about. But what was very interesting was to see the resilience and 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 the recovery of uh, of three hundred and sixty solar. What what do you think explains that? I think there's a, a couple pieces to it. Um, you know, the first is we've got to remember that you know we only listed in August, so it's been six months, I guess now. Um, and, you know, so we're still a new stock. There's, you know, you first come out and nobody knows you exist. They don't even know to look for you to go and trade. Uh, so we've put a lot of effort into trying to get the word out and make sure people know that this is an opportunity for them to invest uh, and to come along with us for the ride. Um, the message that we've put out and certainly the, the conversations that I've had with investors is we're getting people who uh, understand where the renewables market is going and are interested to get involved, not just for a quick short ride, but for you know, what this is going to look like over the next several years as the market goes from you know, $100 billion to $300 billion uh, and how that raises all of us that are in the space uh, along with it. And I think fundamentally, the story we're telling about, you know, the, the specifics of our towers and the problem that we solve just resonates with uh, a lot of people in the space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a good, uh, a good industry uh, with, with a lot of potential, uh, long-term investors, that is uh, what is mainly in your stock. And I think mm -hmm. that that is what many companies would, uh, would of course, like. Mm -hmm. Uh, that that is what makes things uh, work, and and probably also I think uh, Brian and, and and that is uh, one that that uh, you guys should uh, take uh, credit for, uh, you know, executing on your plan and uh, showing uh, you know tangible results and 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 progress. I think that is uh, that is always very very important. Now, looking at uh, you know how the stock is doing, how it's performing in a very interesting way and, and, and as I said earlier in, 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 a, in a shoppy environment what what would be your message to investors like you know I'm an investor I've been paying attention of course to the market I'm in a very conservative position today I think that things may maybe unlock a little bit how should I look at a company like yours like uh, what what should be the things that I think about? look at, analyze, uh, and to be very clear here to everyone, no one here is going to give any advice. <laughs> of course. But we're going we're gonna to give a few thoughts, so I'm asking Brian to give a few thoughts about 
what you need to look at uh, if you want to invest in a company like 360 Solar? Well, I mean, I I believe very firmly that 360 Solar is is just at the start of a very exciting ride that's going to take us to some really big things over the next, you know, two to five years. Um, when we execute on some of the projects that we've already got in the pipeline, and when we continue to build those relationships, um, you know, we're we're truly just at the nascent stage of, uh, of building out something really big in a space that is uh, is also in the early stages of going really big. Uh, and so the opportunity here just seems like, you know, such so much blue sky. Yeah. And should I uh, uh, should I look at it uh, and uh, sit back and, and wait a little bit more to see more? Or should I uh, take advantage of the current market environment? Like how, how should I react at it now? Because I, I, I want to make some decisions in the short term. So how should I look at it now? Should I sit back a bit uh, or, or should I should I get uh, moving? I think getting moving, you know, sooner than later is a great idea because as as more people get the the knowledge that we exist, more and more people are going to be coming to the stock and the demand's going to be there. Um, with the demand being there and the fact that so many of the people coming in plan to hold long term, that means that the supply is not going to be there. And so, uh, you know, there's no time like the present. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you are. We're all working on on developing awareness around your your organization. So I guess the key message to uh, investors is, it's uh, the right moment to have a deep look at uh, the organization, and of course make up your own opinion, do your analysis, as I always say, uh, and uh, and then uh, come to uh, to some uh, to some conclusions. And you know, I also believe that from a market's perspective in in general, where we're getting in uh, in, a, in a very interesting uh, period. Uh, you can see that uh, a little bit uh, in how the, the markets uh, have been uh, performing. You see how central banks are slowing down uh, interest rate uh, hikes. Yeah. So we are uh, probably in a, in a period where uh, you know across the board opportunities are there. And then uh, I think, uh, as said, this is definitely an organization to uh, to zoom in on and uh, and have a good and, and thorough look at. Brian, we're uh, pretty much at the end of our uh, uh, window, and uh, it's always fascinating how quickly it it goes uh, it goes by. But uh, I would probably ask you for uh, uh, to answer one last uh, question, and and that is, uh, you know, if you would like. Uh, to leave uh, the audience with one core thought, what would that be? Uh, it would be, you know, keep an eye on us and uh, the opportunity that exists. Um, and I look forward to very shortly being able to show you, you know, large fields of solar towers changing the game of the uh, of the solar business. Well, I think that that's uh, that's a very nice way to uh, to end it, and uh, I think uh, strong statements meaning pay attention. That is really what uh, what it uh, what it stands for. And uh, Brian, we will be paying attention to you. I can guarantee you that. And I'm looking forward to uh, a follow up spotlight uh, to discuss progress and uh, and milestones. Uh, then, in the I meantime. In the meantime, uh, wishing you uh, lots of success. Thank you for your, your time over here. And to the uh, audience, uh, thank you for joining us. And if you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out. We'll make sure that uh, Brian gets them and uh, can get back to you with uh, all the answers uh, that you would like. Thank you. Have a wonderful afternoon and uh, see you at the next Spotlight. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you too.